Hi everybody. I'm doing something a little bit different today. Um, yesterday I had a little piece of information that really threw me off balance and um, I spent a lot of time trying to get back into balance. I went for a long walk and I went out into the garden and I meditated and over the course of several hours I realized that I needed to really go and talk to God to find out what was needed of me at that moment? What was the cause of the consternation? So I went into a very deep meditation for several hours and became very clear to me actually in that time. I was given a very clear image of Beethoven's Ode to Joy, which is the third movement of his ninth and final symphony. Um, as a musician who studied classical music, played classical music, this is a piece of music that is very, very dear to me as it is to so many people around the world. Um, and, uh, and I realized that it's about the joy. It's very important to um, pull in joy to our lives right now. So I'm going to tell you the story about the premiere of this symphony um, and I told it to my son last night and I was crying like a baby um, just because the importance of this of what it was at the time and what it is today is unimaginable and unmeasurable it is perhaps the most important piece of information I think that we can receive right now so the Ninth Symphony was premiered in 1824. Beethoven had lost his hearing already a long time before this, and in fact, he hadn't premiered anything new in, I think, uh, 10 or 12 years uh, before he pre premiered the Ninth Symphony. Been out of the public eye, and basically coming to terms with deafness, you know, Imagine you're a composer and you lose your sense of hearing, you know. So it seems that what happened with Beethoven is he really went into his head and um, he didn't have any distractions. And this was the time of Napoleon. Um, uh, there was just war, perpetual war. And the American experiment was 50 years old at that time. And the concept of freedom and unity was spreading through the world like wildfire. People in general, before that time, it, the, the concept of freedom, freedom would never occur to them because they were peasants. The vast majority of people was royalty and peasants. So America changed the dynamic and people began to realize, comprehend, and internalize what freedom meant. So Beethoven adapted the text of a poem, an already existing poem, for the Ode to Joy. Now, it's really interesting because this piece of music, the third movement of the Ninth Symphony, was the first time a composer had brought together choral music and instrumental music. In a, in a symphonic setting. And um, when they say a symphony concert hall, they're talking about a place where symphonies are performed. So it's a very specific uh, kind of music that's brought to these, these places. It was the largest orchestra that had ever been assembled. And um, what happened on that stage that night changed the world of music forever. So he'd broken all these rules. And um, with, you know, he's probably nearing the end of his life. And, and so, you know, for him, it's like, you know what, I've done everything I can, what more can I give? So he chose to give the world the ownership of joy through this music. And to me, this piece of music 
defines exactly what the purpose of music is, is to help the rest of the world see something in a new light. So Beethoven was conducting. Uh, it was also the longest symphony uh, at that time. Nobody had ever um, had a piece of music that's an hour before. So, so he was just breaking rules left and right with this piece. So imagine 12 years you've been working on the symphony and you come with this gargantuan orchestra and new concepts of vocal music and and a full house, completely full house, because everybody, you know, Beethoven was, was absolutely beloved. And you must go and listen to this piece of music. I, even if you've heard it before, I urge you to go and listen to it. I just listened to the Chicago Orchestra's version at the, uh, at the anniversary um, on YouTube. There's, there's, you know, whatever streaming service you get your music from, you know, Go and listen, if not to the whole symphony, at least to the third movement of the ninth symphony, Ode to Joy. So, um, so here he is with this music that is so evocative, and it just pulls your heartstrings, and it's up and down and up and down, and and just just the highest energy, beautiful, beautiful energy, and the lyrics. I'm, I'm actually going to read the poem at the end of this video, uh, um, are about liberation, freedom, unity, and connection with God. And when the, when, the, when the music was finished, Beethoven sat or stood in front of the orchestra, eyes closed, with his own emotions. He was dealing with his own emotions of what this music meant to him. And if I cry, please forgive me. It's just, this is, this is how I know that this is what I'm supposed to be doing at this moment in time, and I don't have any shame for it because it's, it's, it's very, very powerful. He stood connected to himself after the finishing of this music. Well, behind him, the audience just went insane. They went insane stomping and clapping and shouting and throwing their hats in the air and and screaming and whistling and just nobody had ever seen anything like this before. Nobody had ever reacted to music this way before. And the orchestra had to get him to turn around and see how the audience was reacting. He had given them joy. He had allowed them the inalienable right of joy. And they accepted, as has anybody who has ever listened to that piece of music. And why this is important right now is that there are those who have done everything in their power to steal our joy. done everything they can to disconnect us from God. And the lesson is that we need to hold fast to our inalienable rights. They are ours given by God. Don't ever let anybody take away your joy, your freedom, your right to the pursuit of happiness. The Constitution of the United States is for the world. And this is what we are coming to. Even though, depending on what stream of information you pay attention to, you may think we're about to go into global lockdown or global governance or global financial freefall or whatever there's 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 so much out there i see it i i i'm not i'm not immune to that that's actually what got me down yesterday but there's something else happening and tomorrow is may 15th and we're be, we're going to begin to see a new world emerge and if you have been strong enough and wise enough 
to hold on to your inalienable rights and not give them up to those who seek to do you harm, it will be the most uplifting thing you've ever experienced in your life. Cannot say the same for the people who have willingly given up their rights, unfortunately. It's a choice. It's always a choice. But tomorrow brings incredible opportunities for an incredible new world. There's a lunar eclipse just after midnight tomorrow. But the big thing is um, John McAfee has a trove of immense information that is going to be released to the world, which tells the story of what's been happening behind the news, behind the green screens, behind the incredible propaganda that is mind-controlled way too many people, too many smart people, and too many people who just are too busy living their life on the gerbil wheel, making ends meet, to be able to really do the research and find out what's going on. So, just as I lost balance yesterday, and I refound it through reconnecting with God, fundamentally, anybody can do that. God is there for us all time, always. And so, I hope you take this lesson and in, in, incorporate it into the rest of all the information that you have coming at you. And I wish you perfection. I wish you bliss. I wish you go and listen to Ode to Joy right now. And I hope and I pray that this change will be quick and that evil will be vanquished once and for all time. That is my greatest prayer. I'm sending love to you. Thank you so much for being here and watching this video. I would love to hear your reactions. Thank you so much. This is the English translation of Ode to Joy, originally written by a German poet named Johann Christoph Friedrich von Schiller in 1785. The poem was amended by Beethoven for the Ninth Symphony. O oh, friends, no more of those sounds. Let us sing more cheerful songs, more songs full of joy. Joy, 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 bright spark of divinity, daughter of Elysium, fire inspired, we tread within thy sanctuary. Thy magic power reunites all that custom has divided. All men become brothers under the sway of thy gentle wings. Whoever has created an abiding friendship or has won a true and loving wife, all who can call at least one soul theirs, join our song of praise. But those who cannot must creep tearfully away from our circle. All creatures drink of joy at nature's breast. Just and unjust alike taste of her gift. She gave us kisses and the fruit of the vine, a tried friend to the end. Even the worm can feel contentment, and the cherub stands before God, gladly, like the heavenly bodies which he sent on their courses through the splendor of the firmament. Thus, brothers, you should run your race like a hero going to victory. You millions, I embrace you. This kiss is for all the world. Brothers, above the starry canopy, there must dwell a loving father. Do you fall in worship, you millions? World, do you know your creator? Seek him in the heavens. Above the stars must he dwell.